Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here, and we were just talking through doing some automation in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is one of the, it's an amazing free program. They have an upgrade, but the free program, it's, it's amazing for editing video. And unfortunately, it's one of those that also doesn't have the standard types of controls and things that AutoHockey can easily connect and, and peer into. And that's where we were just talking through of using like the HTC library in which this is where maybe as I, yeah, I said, let's, Hey, let's hit record. So this is where we are. <laughs> um, as I was saying, well, maybe we can, I think what you were saying is we can still use the control set, set text. text command. Yeah. Yes. But I here, and can. this is where, let me share. Actually, I don't even know. Let me, let me share my screen. I said, I'm glad. Um, so this is the, um, a video, right? And what we were for a simple example is we were trying to be able to programmatically set these values or, yes. or get them right. Or both. Right. So, um, with the ACC library, I was like, Hey, this looks pretty cool. Right. It's mm -hmm. identifying those elements individually. Um, what was, this is what I mentioned to you as so I thought was odd was the, uh, let me, let me change this and now redrag this in here. And this is what surprised me. Maybe it won't surprise you. The name it's not a value. I thought it would have been the value, but it's the name. Um, that's what threw me. Normally, all oh, right. Uh huh. So, so, so the information is actually stored in the name of the control. Yeah, which that is that is odd, actually. Okay, yeah. That is that is odd. Yeah. Um, but but, what but I was, here's the thing: it is still accessible by ACC, right? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, so, uh -huh. I wrote a program. I don't. I, I could pull it up, but using this path, mm -hmm. it's programmatically getting these. The names, I'll, I'll, you mm -hmm. can get the name or the value or some other, or the, the right. I should, the location, right? And this is what okay. I was mentioning to you was, right. hey, we could get the location and then basically know where to send the mouse um, and do it. Now, this so is where... To do it manually, right? Now, this is where, let me, let me start my simple spy. Mm -hmm. I think this is what I wasn't quite clear on. And I said, let's share and blah, blah, blah. So the, the thing was... There are no control like controls. It's all one big control as far as uh, auto hockey sees controls. I'm Is not that... really sure about that one. No, because uh, so so I think that is no, I, and I saw it change. So basically, you see, if you put simple spy on, uh, can you make oh, can you make it? Uh, can you bring it up to the front? It is not one big control. At least here, where it says handle, right? You see where it says handle the first one? It is coming up blank, right? So it might be that the simple spy is using a function that is not giving you the information. Because if you go to the ACC library, let's go to the ACC library. You see the HWND, that's the same as the handle. So yep. the third one. Now, if you drop the, the ACC library on top of one of those controls, I notice the handle changing. So, so in general, so if you drop it to one of them, it gives you a handle. Can you drop it to a different one? Because I noticed it changing. Oh no. So so the whole area there is now can you put it where it says transform? Because I saw that change. Can you click can you put it on the on the where the video is? I swear I saw it change. Because if it is just one big control, no, it's not changing. But actually, I oh, there it is. Uh, there is a change in there, but it is oh, the title, which, right? Which so the menus I've I've seen. Right. This okay. Before. Okay. 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 Those I understand now. And, yeah. 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 And what's really fascinating to me mm -hmm. is sometimes I've been down in here and mm -hmm. said, "Hey, I can't get this," and yet when I hit the show ACC structure mm -hmm. and I start playing around the same options will actually be up in this menu and I can get the path, but I have to basically navigate around through this crazy crap to mm -hmm. figure out where that is. But it's, it's like a dual approach. Well, so, I have noticed, I have noticed that a lot of these programs, like 90% of the commands or options that you have in screen, they are part of the menu as well. I've uh -huh. seen that. Right. Right. Yeah. So basically most of them, you can set a hotkey for it because they're a menu command. Right. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. like the, when menu select item is that what it's called yeah um, these aren't those unfortunately <laughs> yeah I, I don't i haven't so, tested it but so I'll just to make yeah for for making sure uh for for trying to clarify this is actually not 
a Windows Systems 32 GUI. This is actually yeah, a you were saying. GUI. Yeah, there's a QT GUI and it is a little bit different. Um, and, and it has to be different because it is supposed to be cross-platform. It works in Windows and Linux. So for that reason, it is a different library and so on. But um, when we don't have access to the individual controls, it is, as you say, it is going to be a little bit easier. It's basically the same as what happens with Chrome, right? When you're trying to automate Chrome, what happens is that you have access to the main um, engine, but not the individual controls inside the engine. So this is what is happening here too. In that case, yeah, we would have to do it manually and moving the mouse to that position, clicking and then setting up a value manually with a send command or something like that might be... Yeah, well, might be the only approach because I cannot I cannot get right. the handle for that particular uh, thing. Because but, so so basically, what is going on is that is not a specific window because you know that controls are types of windows, right? Yeah. So those are not types of windows. They're rendered. They're, they are. It is just one control, right? That is rendering each individual control is what is happening. So it, yeah. they're not windows. They're rendered items in a, like in a control failure. yeah <laughs> the way in my head i'm thinking about it is when gdi is drawing and they'll draw different stuff it, i i couldn't programmatically say like hey here's this gdi yeah, yeah. no you know, no exactly because it is not the same as different windows so each window has its handle but uh -huh. this is not it this is actually a lot of drawn things in a gui that's how i would think about it um, but here's the other thing i'll say is uh -huh. for the use i was planning it it won't be overly helpful. However, we can a programmatically get those values, you know, with the ACC library. At right? least, so, yeah, you can get the values yeah. and you can get the position of it. Well, but that, you cannot but just, interact right. with it which because it's important not because if we were to move it like this, it would still work very reliably. Right, like that's yes. the beauty of having the ACC library to programmatically get that location. We're not looking also. If you were doing image search, which is what someone might try, hey, I'll look for this Zoom X and move over to the right, you know, but- mm -hmm. um, But that, they, that, that would not be this. good, right. <laughs> exactly, right. Which is what we both always try to avoid is yes. sending keystrokes and looking for images. Now, the fact that you can get the ACC library to find it is amazingly good. And now it explains why you cannot interact with it because uh, you see where it says value, it doesn't have a value, ah, yeah. right? So, so it doesn't have a value. So you cannot set the value for it. Right. Right now, my question would be like, could I change the name of it? Right. Yeah, and that's what work. We'll, yeah. yeah, we'll need to look um, to dig into it. Uh, um, if there's a way for me to change the name yeah. itself, right? Right. Right. No, but that's the, it. Is a very interesting topic, and and it is uh, sad that you're gonna just go ahead and do that. What I, as I mentioned, my my solution to that was actually using a, a hot string. So I was just clicking right. on the first, I was clicking there. I put a hot string that goes around and puts the value, hit tap yeah. twice, puts the next value and so on. So which, basically I did it that way. Which isn't a terrible approach, right? It's the thing is it's better than nothing. But, right. Well, and, and the other options are not available. That's the problem. So when, when you try to uh, do everything, the best approach, uh, approaches and they are not working then going with a send keystrokes approach might not be that bad it's just that you're forced to it as i say the thing is especially you know when you're let's say mm -hmm. you're editing our, our course videos which hopefully are out soon um you have to get work done right you're like hey i can't go off on this tangent and just say let me right. automate davinci resolve and spend four hours trying to figure out how to do this so that that's where i'm like hey you know what we we tried using the ac side but hey we can get this can I program? No, I can't use controls. Okay, you know what? Sending tabs, you know, and going through it. Is it the best in the world? No, but you know what? It gets me something now and it'll save me time now. And then later, you know, some other point, maybe we can say, hey, you know what? Let's let's see if we can find a way. Like, so I, I mentioned just FYI, like um, individual resolve, you can copy and it's kind of like a paste special. You can mm -hmm. paste the attributes. And so we yes. could have like those Somehow, dimensions. Paid. Yes. Um, however, and, and this is what you were explaining to me why is DaVinci Resolve doesn't use the clipboard the way programs use the clipboard. So when right. I copied in DaVinci Resolve, it didn't shove it. I was monitoring the clipboard and it didn't change at all. It never like, changed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, it was nice because at least I didn't spend eight hours trying to solve how to do it. <laughs> it was right away of like this, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. So now I, I do want to say something like, 
one of the reasons why we don't use the send command is because of fluctuations in the timing between sending keys. For example, yeah. if you're doing uh, trying to send keys to a website, the website can take a little bit longer to load and so on. This type of programs, there is no waiting time. It is kind of like a static place. So, so the Zoom uh, values or uh, attributes, it's not like one time you send the key and, uh, and it's going to take five milliseconds and the next one is going to take 200 milliseconds. It's not going to change the, the, the timing. Right, there is no latency because it is a, a local program uh, <clears throat> and there's no change in that. So in that type of situations, when you know that the program, the, the timing is not going to be affected, sending keystrokes is a perfectly valid way of doing it because it is stable. Sending keystrokes is not good when the timing between the keys might be changing, like for example, in a game, in a browser, or if you're sending something to the internet and waiting for a reply, that is something that you cannot control. So in this case, I think it is a valid answer to just use either a hot stream or a send command. Well, and we're still gonna, you know, at some point dig into it deeper and hope we can find a way to, because the UI automation approach also, I will, I have high hopes that we can see into it there and hopefully set the name that way. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see if that helps, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks. You're welcome.